It's about time because we're going there. Hello and welcome back to another episode of We're Going There. I am your host, Bianca Juarez Oltoff, and I love being able to introduce you to friends up close and personal, whether I know them digitally or whether I know them personally. The guest on today's show, I'm so excited to have. He is not just a podcaster and an author, a social media influencer, and a preacher, but this man is culturally relevant in a way that I find fresh and refreshing. I hope you enjoy our conversation as we talk about dealing with conflict and controversy, how to heal privately and publicly, and best ways to obtain healing even if we can't afford a therapist. I got to spend some time chatting with Tim at a conference not too long ago, and I couldn't wait to have him on the podcast. I hope you enjoy this bonus episode. And for more information on Tim, you can follow him on Instagram, upsettthegram, or visit the website, www.upsettheworld.com. Let's join in for some TMI, or as Tim likes to say, T-I-M. Tim, I'm so excited. I've been waiting for this interview and I moved heaven and hell to make sure that I got some time to talk to you today, brother. Thank you for being on the show. Bianca, thank you for having me. I'm so grateful to be here. Okay. So before we dive in, because there, there are a number of questions I want to talk about and some amazing things that we get to discuss on today's show, but I have to go back. I discovered something about you that we grew up in a very similar area growing up. Tell me, tell me, you grew up in Southern California, correct? I did. Okay. Remember when we were at VuCon and I went to the recording that you guys did uh, there in Miami and you told me that you grew up in a city very close to where I grew up. Where did you grow up? So I was born in Inglewood, California, uh, but because my brother founded a gang out there, our parents moved us about 20 miles out to a dot of a city called Balinda. <laughs> Nobody knows where Balinda is, but it's right next to La Puente. Which is and where West I Covina. grew up. <laughs> yes. Yes, brother. Yes. But here's you grew what people up need in to... La Puente? Well, if we're feeling fancy, LP Shores, okay? So Girl, East L- you so feeling you fancy South... for it. <laughs> you, so you live you South LA. Fancy. Yes. And I left East LA. You went to Belinda. I went to La Puente. And we are basically, we're basically cousins now. Okay. What okay. people don't well, understand this, though. Did you go to Puente like, Hills High School? Okay. Well, no, I was really conservative because we grew up in the 90s. And my parents homeschooled us. Oh, so, then, oh, you you got the oh my God. You, and then we you ended won. up moving. When I was 14, we moved. However, what yep. people need to know is that like you are down for brown. Like you you are a chocolate skin brother, but you are also down for brown. You know Hispanic culture because of where yes, you were I raised. Do. Oh, so that's absolutely. why I'm like, oh ba- Tim? Yeah, Tim's my cousin. Yeah. Welcome to the show. Listen, <laughs> listen Ju- Juliet knows with all respect that if I never left California, I'd be married to a Latina or a Filipina. Uh, right. Point blank period. <laughs> Or probably a Latina and Filipina mixed. So mixed. <laughs> we definitely cousins for sure. Oh, for sure. For sure. Absolutely. Now, I am so excited. I've been wanting to sit down and have a conversation with you because when I take a look at what you were doing online, social media, through writing, through podcasting, through YouTubing, it is insane the doors that the Lord has opened for you. But because you are no bars held, no punches pulled type of conversationalist, oh, it has put you in some hot water. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm just kind of like licking my finger and raising it to the proverbial wind to see where, where's the wind blowing. And I think that it is people that are willing to make a stand, people that are willing to have hard conversations and people who are, who have a theological background to have these conversations are the ones that are really connecting, not just to heart, but to mind as well. And so that being said, there are a couple, uh, a couple places where conversations that you had that got you into a little bit of hot water. Yep. We don't have time to unpack every single one. But one yeah. of the things I want to talk about with uh, on this episode are two things. One, how do we deal with conflict and controversy that is public? Yep. And then in a, in a, and then I'm going to do a hard right, but I'm going to bring them together at the end. But like, how do you heal in privacy? Now, some of these are interconnected, but I'm going to ask you questions I, I know a little bit about you. But yeah. take me on and take us on probably one of the hardest or most controversial seasons, conversations or backlash that you faced. And how did you navigate through that then? And and is it different from how you're navigating through things now? Yeah. So, um, you know, one of the unique things about starting this podcast, Bianca, was that I received this instruction from the Holy Spirit that I knew was going to change the trajectory of my life. First of all, I'm an introvert. Mm -hmm. 
doing a podcast is so outside of the scope of anything I ever wanted to do. Um, I was so content being a lead pastor of a church, a few thousand people, and, you know, kind of regionally known in our area in the DFW Metroplex. But outside of that, it was kind of like, Tim who? Oh, I think that's Mike Todd's mentor. Yeah, whatever. Right. To going to the podcast guy that's like in everybody's algorithm. And um, then it's like, oh, we know who that guy is. Right. So what I realized is um, this instruction that the Holy Spirit gave me was very, very clear. Um, the way that you have discipled and mentored people in private, that's the way that I need you to speak now in public. Mm. My response was, oh, you know how I talk in private. If you want me to talk like that publicly, I'm going to get canceled. And the Holy <laughs> Spirit was like, yeah, go ahead and get canceled. And so that was in 2022. 2023 is when I really started to feel what cancel culture is like mm -hmm. and people making reaction videos and people making um these statements, you're a false teacher, you're a wolf in sheep's clothing, um, mm -hmm. you're leading people astray, you're spiritually immature. And again, you know where we're raised. <laughs> and and so from where I'm from, it's like if somebody's talking about you, you go to them. Mm -hmm. Right? You you go straight to them. And I realize in this social media kind of um Holy Ghost Jr. Uh, uh, space where people are like, I must defend Jesus's name and I must warn everyone about whoever I think is bad. They, they actually don't want to talk to you. They want to talk about you, but they don't want to talk to you. And mm. so what I had to learn is that um, their comments were, their comments to my content were not, um, were not enough for me to make comments back like like I heard what they said and um I had to process it because I am a I'm an empath and I'm a feeler and so my feelings can get hurt and there's some hood in me and so I wanted to hurt their feelings back right or more but at the end of the day I'm a disciple of Jesus and it's like I'm not even being persecuted I'm being disagreed with Right. And some people are mean spirited in the way that they disagree. They can't just say, I don't you know, I think I don't like what Tim says or his theology might be off, in my opinion. But they go further and they're like, yeah, I hope something happens to him. Or mm. if, if I saw him, I would slap him in his face. And I'm like, OK, homie, you <laughs> you, you change the parameters of the whole conversation, because like, I don't know what you're trying to get into right now, but you don't know me like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> so. What I have to do at that point is be reminded of what my assignment is, who told me to do what I'm doing, and that good old Galatians 2.20 has been in full effect for the last 20, almost 24 months, Bianca, which is I am crucified with Christ. Mm. Not was, not will be. Mm -hmm. I am currently crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ that lives on the inside of me. That's where I have to rest in this whole thing as much as the controversy is because I, I'm not taking back what I said. I said what I said. You said what you said and you said it twice. So there <laughs> is no topic that you do, do not touch. I mean, you're, you're talking Correct. about sexuality. You're talking about pornography. You're talking about all the lovely things that Christians love to put in a box and in a closet and then in a safe. And so right. by putting that out and having these conversations and these dialogues, and what I do love, and I want to affirm for anyone that hasn't listened to uh, The Basement, is that it, you give a very robust view. You're not coming in with like one side. You are speaking to right. all sides. And you're also yeah. normalizing how, how all of us are walking with some sort of sin that we don't want to talk about. Yep. But uh, this is what I heard, that you are dying on a hill for speaking the truth. You are unashamed about having these conversations, you are unapologetic about having these conversations, and then you have the wisdom to not respond. Did I get those four things correct? You absolutely did because you're a great listener. <laughs> yeah. oh, thank you. Thank you, friend. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, so how about this? Um, I will not say this person's name because you know them and you're friends with them, but they mm -hmm. decided that they were going to cut a clip. And I've mentioned this on the podcast before. I want yeah. you to mentor me. Because what you're doing right now is that in mentoring me and my maybe perceived foolishness, please tell me if I'm wrong. I, actually, there's yeah. no doubt in my mind that you will call me out and be like, Bianca, you need to get <laughs> saved all over again. But 
<laughs> there is going to be someone out there that is going to learn from this because we are going to have conflict at, at the office. We're going to have conflict in church. We're going to have conflict on social media. And so I have seen you really keep your head held high during um, moments of controversy. And so somebody uh, took a clip from a conference that I, that I was at. I was speaking on a panel. Mm -hmm. We were talking about the Holy Spirit. They mm -hmm. took the content, they um, sped up the speed. So I'm, mm. it, I, I already talk fast. Now I sp right. sound like I'm like on crack. <laughs> I'm speaking so fast. They put a filter on it. I'm looking as orange as Snooky from Jersey Shore. And I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. And they took a 17 second clip, but made a two minute video about how wrong I am in my understanding mm. of the Holy Spirit. Wow. Now, I was, I was, I was, I was lit up. I was living. For, for sure. Was, first of all, you could you could have an issue with my theology, but why are you going to put an ugly filter on me? Like, <laughs> like that's just rude. That is just that is just extra rude. Like you're trying to make me not just sound bad but look bad. So I I, I called I called my sister. I said, "Can you even?" Because people started tagging me. People not just from our church, but people from other people. Like, hey, and they were tagging me, not like, "Oh, listen to what he's saying," but they were defending me. And I felt that if, that was love. And yep. I should have, if I was Tim Ross, this is what I heard you say that I would, you know, be mature, rise above it, not respond. I'm just not there yet. <laughs> you clap back, <laughs> honey. Okay, <laughs> I wanted to do it publicly because if you're oh going to put God. my name out there, I wanted to defend myself publicly. And I said, you know what? I'm a classy dame. So I popped into the DMs and I, I, I said, hey, um, I want to let you know that if you ever have a question on my theology, you have a direct access to me via direct message. For Secondly, sure. you have not only made my calling hard, you've made my calling hurtful. As a woman, mm. as a woman of color, and a woman of color who is a pastor, you have made a presupposition of my theology that is not only incorrect, it is a gross mischaracterization mm. of even what the Bible says. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then he chimes back and wants to like debate theologically and no apology, no apology. Mm, mm -hmm. Said um, he was responding to some people that apparently he knows that he's in the hip hop world. Or okay, I'm judgmental. I was like, I never heard of you, and you're not in the hip hop world. <laughs> whatever. Anyway, anyway. Yeah, so yeah. then uh, he responds back, and I respond back like lovingly. I said, Hey, this is Matthew eighteen fifteen, bro. You should have come to me, and you didn't. And yeah. you're building a platform on tearing people in the church down. So yep. why don't you go and have a conversation with them before you come and holler at people and then put them on blast? Because these are people that are building the church. You don't. I don't even know if you go to church, bro. Right, like right, you're right. out here. So so, anyways. And then he said, This is a great conversation. Why don't you come on a podcast? Oh, uh, I no. said, nah. Absolutely not. Nah. Absolutely not. Please nah. tell me. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna call you pastor Tim right now. I know you don't pastor, <laughs> you're, you're a pastor at heart. So I'm just gonna say, listen, I need you to pastor the people. I need you to yeah. mentor the, 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 yep. the, the crazies. Yep. What would you have done? What did I do wrong? How can you, you coach us coach? Hi friends, I'm interrupting this podcast to let you know about HomeChef. HomeChef.com is an at-home delivery system and what I like most about it is that you can get easy to cook options or if you're an aspiring chef like me, you could actually try something a little bit more daring with their culinary experiences. If you don't have time or patience to meal prep or grocery shop, then this is the thing that's going to make it the easiest for you. In fact, I get mine delivered on Sundays, and when I get home from church, I whip something up right then and there. Not only am I saving money rather than going to Uber Eats or DoorDash, I get to make it at home. In addition to it being easy and convenient, statistics will say that I'm saving about $86 per month on groceries. For a limited time, Home Chef is offering my listeners of We're Going There podcast 18 free meals, plus free shipping on your first box and free dessert for life at homechef.com backslash going there. I have to let you know I do skip out on the desserts and I have to let you know that you have to be an active subscriber to receive those free desserts. But if you want to try it out or get more information, go to homechef.com backslash going there. That's homechef.com backslash going there. Hope you enjoy. Yeah, you, you didn't do anything wrong. And I'm going to tell you why you didn't do anything wrong. The first maybe three or four reaction videos that I got that I came across, I reached out to the people. Mm just as you did. I DM'd them. I'm like, hey, here's my number. Call me. Mm. And um, the, the first person that I got on the phone, I, I talked to actually two of them. So uh, one of them, um, I got on the phone. His, his mouth got so dry, it sounded like he had eaten six powdered donuts and had two, <laughs> two spoonfuls of creamy peanut butter. And he, he just, and I just thought, oh, you, 
you're only about that life from a distance. We got on the phone. This guy's clamming up, mouth getting dry. I mean, when you hear a sticky mouth over the phone, that is, that's different, right? And so I was like, oh, this is, you're really not about that life. And there was another well-known guy that called me out because I, I, I use strong language on a couple of my pods. And um, wait, wait, hold on. It's called we're going there. So can I ask what this strong language was? Like, what, was it a four letter word that wasn't love or was it? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, um, I said the F word on my pod. Um, okay. I said something was I said something was effed up. And okay. the context of that, I, I said it out of anger. I, I use strong language to convey my strongest emotions. Um, and uh, we were talking about the context was we were talking about uh, churches that would keep. Um, spouses in horrible abusive marriages just to say that they're they're still married and that we love marriage and god hates divorce i said churches that keep people in abusive relationships because they've deified marriage over protecting the individual i said that's effed up but i actually said the word and i bleeped the word so like it's not like anybody heard me say it but i did say it during the pod and we went back and post and we bleeped it and then all of a sudden it was like Tim's a sinner. And um I'm like, I'm not <laughs> like I, I'm not, but that that that's the emotion. I could have said egregious. I have a very wide vocabulary. I could have said egregious. I could have said that that's disheartening. I could have said that um uh th this is deplorable. I could have used a whole bunch of words. Effed up was the was the right one based on the way I felt at the time. So this person puts out a whole blog saying that, you know, this is wrong and all this kind of stuff. So I get on the phone with him. And when I get on the phone with him, he's like, yeah, I completely understand. And I'm like, wait a minute, you did a whole blog saying I was wrong, but we get on the phone and I tell you, I've traveled around the world and these words in other countries are not even cuss words. Like this wouldn't even be a swear word in London. Like, I yeah. can't even, I won't even tell you what they say in the pulpit in Scotland, right? <laughs> like, like, like words are in our vocabulary is, is, is an amalgamation of who won the last war. So I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to be some crusader and trying to make it in vogue for believers to um, cuss. I am saying that as a believer, there are some emotions where those words are what I choose. And I've never been convicted by the Holy Spirit in using those words. It's, it's never blocked me in my devotion time. It's never hindered me from getting a sermon. It's never, it's never been a point where I had to call my accountability partner and confess. So um, once I realized from those two experiences that, Bianca, they, here's what I would have told you if you would have called me first. What I would have said is, he's not interested in understanding you he's mm. interested in the misunderstanding and how it benefits him Ooh. and to that and to that i would just say listen if this is gonna get your likes subscribes and clicks up if i'm paying a little bit of your mortgage off of this if i'm paying a little bit of a car note or an electricity bill because the algorithm pops up when you use my face man at least buy buy me something <laughs> to drink you know what I'm saying? My favorite wine is Hall 2019. Send it to the house. I mean, if I if I paid your light bill, if I covered your Tesla payment and you using my face, just just buy me some Hall wine. I'm not saying I need your whole check, but if, if you go if 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 Tim Ross coming out your mouth every month is how you get paid, buy me some wine. <laughs> Jesus drunk wine. I like wine. Buy me some, buy Bianca some wine. If you just think everything she says about the Holy Spirit is just off and that ran your numbers up because you couldn't just say there was a woman that I saw and she said something about the Holy Spirit and I just want to address that. When you start bringing Bianca's name and face into it, mm. buy, us some, buy us a gift. <laughs> Get Bianca her favorite lip gloss. I don't know. Pay for her next hairdo. All I'm saying Amen. is, if you're profiting off of it, you 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 claim that you're the watchman on the wall, and mm. you're trying to you're you're trying to warn the body of Christ. First of all, it's presumptuous for you to even think 
your profile's that big that you are warning the entire body of Christ. You have 1,100 subscribers. Stop playing. <laughs> Just, so that's my, that's my spiel. That's what I would have told you. Okay, so this is <laughs> this is what I heard. Um, just recognize because I, I think okay. So in this season of my life, mm -hmm. um, or I'm I'm being scrutinized. I'm being watched. Um, I am a lead pastor and I'm a female. Like, there's a lot. There's a lot that people could pick at. And so what I heard in this free therapy session with Tim Ross <laughs> is, uh, if there's something that's going to benefit them, they probably won't stop. Correct. And what we're saying is, hey, can you can you dispense the wealth in the Reaganomics of talking trash online? Just just share the wealth. That, that's all what I'm I saying. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> okay, so in in sharing wisdom and having conversations, when you were asking people, hey, this is my cell phone number, call me, and you started realizing that behind closed doors there was a little bit more grace, or maybe if they felt like the cat got their tongue. Where are you now? Because I'm sure like as you continue to grow and all the work that you're starting, all the work that you've done has just been spreading, that there's more eyes on you. Yep. So are you just rising above the fray? Are you just not engaging in those conversations anymore? Yeah, I'm, I don't even engage in them anymore. And here's the reason why. Um, Jesus did the majority of his earthly ministry in a three square mile radius. Okay, mm -hmm. so outside of him taking his travels to Jerusalem or for whatever, whatever festival, he was about a, he was in like a three square mile radius for all of his earthly ministry. Which means he was always running into the Pharisees. Mm. And we see that as we read through the Gospels. They're everywhere. They seem to just be in places that it's like, if you don't like, dude, why would you even be here? Right. It, it, it was, it's the equivalent to me now of somebody going, I can't stand Tim Ross's stuff. But you haven't unsubscribed. You haven't <laughs> blocked me. You haven't said not interested. All things that, that Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, they all give you the option to make people disappear. And you keep coming. You're not even talking about old stuff. You're talking about the last clip I put out. <laughs> so either you like it or you don't. And... Since Jesus couldn't get away from the scribes and Pharisees, I, I reckoned I'm not going to get away from mm. the people that have an yeah. issue with me. Yeah. And so Jesus never ducked them unless they were trying to kill him before time because he, he had an appointed time. Mm -hmm. Unless they were trying to kill him, Jesus wasn't even trying to like, oh, my God, they're the Pharisees. Let's go the other way. So he knew that they were coming to trap him with questions. He yeah. knew that they were coming to scrutinize everything he did. Yep. His disciples are breaking off heads of grain as they're walking through a field. Why are your disciples working on the Sabbath day? You, you know, the, 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 four, the four friends tear a hole in the roof and lower him down. The Pharisees are in the front row of a jam-packed house, hating. This man can't forgive sins. They just thought it to themselves. Mm -hmm. Jesus is like, what did you just say? And they're like, oh, God. So... <laughs> That response lets me know the Pharisees don't know what to do when you respond to them personally. Mm. And so I realized, well, if Jesus couldn't get around, couldn't get away from them, and he found a way to do his earthly ministry anyway, I'm going to take the same approach. I love that. I love that. Yep. Okay. I want to shift gears just a little bit, but yeah. um, you've also been very candid and you've shared um, some addictions that you've had, some mistakes that you've made, um, some trauma in your past. Yep. So the question I ask is now uh, you served in church ministry for a number of years and you still are doing a version of ministry. It's just, it looks very different, but right. what does healing look like for you when you uh, have trauma in your past and there's certain things, whether it's criticism online or decisions that you've made that people might not agree with. What does healing look like to you? And is there a value in the privacy aspect of it? Like how do you heal now um, from maybe um, not putting things online that maybe other people would say would be unwise? Yeah. So, so um, th there's a, he there's a healing aspect. I'm going to address that first to answer your question, but I also want to talk about like a practical aspect that will keep you from just being wounded over and over again. So the healing aspect for me is that I've been saved for 28 years. I gave my life to Jesus January 14th of 1996 um, in, my, in my parents' church. My mom was the lead pastor of that church. If she didn't plant that church, I'm not talking to you right now. Hmm. I'm probably still saved, but the foundation is different. The trajectory is different. 
So my mom obeying God in the face of women shouldn't be pastors. So I rock with you, homie. Anybody got something to say to you, tell them to holler at your boy. You ain't even got to <laughs> talk to him no more. Tell him, DM Tim, do another reaction video on him, and he'll, he'll set you straight. <laughs> um, um, but healing for me for the last 26 of my 28 years has included uh, therapy. And so yeah. because of my uh, sexual abuse that I suffered at eight and mm-hmm. porn addiction and promiscuity and all these different things, um, what was beneficial to me was to have a place that I routinely went to, to unpack my emotions, to put words to my feelings yeah. so, that, so that I could heal. I tell people uh, a lot that whatever um, you don't reveal, you can't heal from. And my other mm-hmm. thing that my boys can finish, if I start it, they can finish it is whatever doesn't come up and out of your mouth through words will come up and out of your body through actions. Mm-hmm. So when you don't put feelings into words, those feelings will go into actions. And so um, I heal by having constant weekly sessions uh, with my therapist. I, I'm a part of a process group therapy uh, cohort. Uh, that I've been in for the last seven years. Uh, we we meet once a month for eight hours, uh, one Tuesday every month for eight hours. And then my EMDR therapy can mm-hmm. fluctuate between a month uh, at the most, uh, well, well, at the least it's a month, but it could be as frequent as a week, every single week. Right now it's at a week. I just lost my dad. He died on um, February 24th. And mm-hmm. so I... I, I needed I need to talk more uh, to make sure that I don't step into any maladaptive behavior. Mm-hmm. I love Jesus and I don't trust my flesh. So um, mm-hmm. uh, getting getting in that room and being able to put as much into words as possible, understanding what I'm feeling, being able to articulate that to my wife and kids. Very, very important. Mm. So. There's healing that takes place um, from a very like formal and standard way, which if you know me, everyone on this podcast knows I am an ardent supporter of therapy and theology. They need to go together. And I, I have not one, I have two counselors in this season, one that is dealing with um, like leading during crisis. And another one that is dealing with like my heart to make sure that I still love Jesus and I'm still on fire for him. Good high levels of accountability. Yep. So the question I think that, might feel a little overwhelming for people is maybe they don't have a big platform like you. Uh, Maybe they don't have the funds and resources for counseling and therapy for the 25, 26 year old female that is out there dealing with trauma, whether aware of it or unaware of it and doesn't have the ways and the means for formal counseling or therapy. Where does she go? Where does he go? He or she needs to start with somebody that they just trust. Okay. Um, confession is literally good for the soul. Mm. It's absolutely good for the soul. And, um, there's a lot of people that confess vertically, but they don't do it horizontally and therefore they actually don't get healed. So Mm. let me give you two passages of scripture that connect this cross of confession that should be coming out of us. The first is always with God, right? I confess my sins. I confess my faults. I confess the way I feel to God. First John chapter one says that if we confess our sins to God, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Right. So I, I, I can't tell you how many people I know love Jesus, uh, uh, confess their sin, but they're never healed. They've been confessing the same sin for like 37 years, but they're never healed from it. They've never recovered from it. They've never progressed on from it. Why? Because they, they do the vertical, but they don't do horizontal. Yeah. James 5.16 says, Conf- confess your sins one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Mm. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. King James Version. So um, wh- what I realized is that not only did I need verticality in my confession, I needed to have horizontal confession. Mm. And so before I knew to go to a counselor, the first two years, Listen, I got saved in my parents' church. I was dropping dimes on my parents left and right. I know they were like, <laughs> I did not ask you all that. I'm like, mom, dad, so sorry. I sinned. I watched porn. I masturbated. I didn't want to, but I did. Will Jesus forgive me? They're like, yes, sir. And 
TMI. And I'm like, <laughs> correction, T-I-M. Like, don't get it twisted. I, I got this from y'all. Y'all are the reason why I'm so honest, open, and transparent. So let's not try to act like you shy now. You know, so um, I started with my parents. I, then that went on to my covenant relationships uh, with my best friend, Corey Miller, Preston mm -hmm. Morrison, Mike Todd. Like I got, I got a cohort of people that I could talk to about anything at any time because I, I want to live my life with the lights on. So that. you don't need to make a million dollars and have Dr. Phil be your counselor. It can be your tia, right? Like it can be your auntie. <laughs> It could be Theo Hector. Like, it could be anybody. It could be your abuela. Somebody that you trust needs to know what you're going through because we all need to be seen, heard, known, loved, mm. even if we're disagreed with. Mm. This is the truth that I don't think a lot of people are willing to say. And for those that love podcasts, this is like the power of what you're unleashing in your podcast. And all, not just podcasts. I'm going to say your show because YouTube, podcast, social yeah. media, all of it. So um, as we, because it's a podcast and because people are enjoying content that's coming out, uh, I, I want to shift gears as we kind of wrap things up because and spend a little more time unpacking. What was the impetus for the podcast? And I know it, but I think that the, I think the audience needs to know because if people are looking for a new podcast and also the, the podcast has morphed into conversations that have now come out in a book, like you literally are resourcing people on all fronts, video, yep. podcasts, books, like it's a lot. And you're still, you're preaching to people, you're mentoring the masses, you're doing the most, you're doing it all. And I'm here for it. Uh, but I want to know, like for somebody that's listening, like, Hey, I want more of Tim. What, what's the soul of, of the content that, that's being produced? What was the impetus? How did it start? Why did it start? And it actually, you were doing both, you were pastoring and podcasting at the same time, correct? Right. Absolutely. Yeah, talk to me about that. Yeah. So we, the Holy spirit told me to, uh, told me that my season as a lead pastor was coming to an end in September of 21. We identified who my successor was going to be in March of 22. And then in May of 22, he told me to start the podcast. First episode dropped on July 6th, three, three and a half weeks later, we had 25,000 subscribers on you on YouTube. Mm. Now it's over 300,000. And so what I realized was, um, God had given me this revelation when I was 30 years old about the basement. I just thought it was supposed to be used as a discipleship mechanism and a mentoring mechanism. I had no idea he wanted so many people to know about it. But what we've created, Bianca, is this safe space um, where people can be seen, heard, known, and loved um, because the, 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 the foundation of healing requires safety and stabilization. No one can heal from anything without being safe and without being in a stable environment. And so once I realized that he gave us this safe space to create and then we were able to turn it into an app. So now we have a, a, a safe place for the safe space. So now we, we don't have to worry about YouTube's algorithm, YouTube's censorship mm -hmm. uh, laws. YouTube can do whatever they want to now. They can completely demonetize an entire episode. They can strike us if they want to. It doesn't matter. Our content lives in a place that we can control. And we're giving people a safe place to give us the gift of their vulnerability. We yeah. talk a lot about transparency. Uh, there's so much um, therapeutic language that's being used in culture now, but vulnerability is a gift that you could never demand from a person. Mm -hmm. Vulnerability is when somebody gives you something of their own free will that you were never going to get unless they wanted you to know it. Mm. That's vulnerability. That's different mm -hmm. from honesty. Honesty is about telling the truth about a fact. <laughs> Right. Transparency is being see through like, hey, I'm going to be transparent. OK, that's cool. Vulnerability is the most intimate thing you could give a person yeah. is a piece of information that they were even if you were to, to uh, torture them. I'm not giving you this if I don't want to give it to you. Right. So it's an extravagant gift. We treat it as such. And as a result, people over and over again keep coming to us because they trust us. Mm -hmm. um, to hold space and give containment to what they're feeling, what, what they've been through, knowing that they're going to be seen, heard, known, loved. Again, 
even if they're disagreed with. The four things every human needs. The fifth, that's optional. I want to give people a place where they can be seen, a place where they can be heard, a place where they can be known, and a place that they can be loved. I can't guarantee I'll agree with their truth, right? But I don't have to. (laughs) If I give them four out of five, we're winning. Yeah. Yeah, we're winning. So one of the things um, that I want people to know about uh, you and the content that you are producing is that I just feel like it's so, it's like a, a rhema word. I'm going to do, do a little Hebrew word, but it's like a rhema word that you're bringing to people. It is a very now word. You're speaking to mm-hmm. our culture now. I, I want people to get connected with you. Um, there, There's going to be a link in the show notes to the YouTube channel, the app, the book, the podcast, all, all these things, because I feel like the wisdom that we just, we just got like itty bitty little nuggets. One of my favorite things that you are not afraid of ha- talking and discussing is you're really, you're not calling men out, you're calling men up. And I think that there, it takes a specific person to do that. But yep. what you're doing is you're challenging the men, Christian and non-Christian, just men Absolutely. in general, Absolutely. men as a gender. Like, That's hey, right. this is the behavior that we get to. We have the privilege of owning and honoring and living up to. So I say how truly grateful I am. There's conversations that circle around our staff and, and our church. Your name comes up. You are in the fabric of like helping to pastor our people and mentor the masses. Like you are, you're part of that. I just oh, want to say you. thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your words. I'm excited for the book. The book's already out, but there'll be a link in the show notes directly to Amazon. We got to boost those Amazon sales. That's what I'm talking about. (laughs) They already, they already, uh, up the re upped on an order. So keep it coming. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Yes. Look at the favor of God. I cannot, (laughs) I cannot. All those information is going to be in the show notes, but a a starting step is for people to check you out on social media because you put so much good content out there. It's so shareable. It's so actionable. It's so practical. And that's one of my favorite things about you, but Tim, thank you so much for your time. I'm excited that I get to have a few minutes to unpack and talk life, especially with somebody that's in my body, oh, that's in my hood. Oh bro. my <laughs> goodness. No, we we fam for life. You say La Puente, it's over. Like we are fam <laughs> for life. <laughs> I love and appreciate you. Thank you so much. I love you you too. and your family continue to put out amazing content. Thank you so much. Okay, so I have to let you know that after the podcast interview, I clicked the stop recording button and then Tim and I had a separate conversation. And if you couldn't tell that I enjoyed my conversation with him on the podcast. I have to tell you that I enjoy him even more after our private conversation. He is a man who is through and through honest, true to the bone, and keeps it real on so many different levels. I can't wait for you to find out more information about Tim, his book, his podcast, his YouTube, all the things that he's doing. He is unabashedly unafraid of going there, and I've loved having him on the show. It would mean a lot to me if you tagged upset the gram at upset the gram with something that you learned from the podcast. I know that it is always a gift and a blessing when people who share their wisdom and content get to fill the love online. Though I might not be on social media, I hope that you go ahead and tag them and spread the love. I appreciate you. Thanks so much, family. 